Look, I'm a big fan of clear sunscreens and I thought everybody loved the unseen sunscreen from Supergoop until I read this post on Reddit. Supergoop is an overrated waste of money. It costs $38 and doesn't provide good sun protection. I've been using tretinoin every night for a year so I need a reliable sunscreen. I noticed that I still get sunburnt after sun exposure with Supergoop and I'm super disappointed. Yes, I bought it from the actual supergoop.com site, not Amazon, so it is the legit product. I apply it in two layers every hour and 40 minutes to make sure that my skin is always protected and gets the right amount of sunscreen, but I still get a red face. My skin doesn't have issues with Tret, no flaky, dry, or irritated skin. I just get sunburnt for wasting my money on an overrated sunscreen that ain't worth a damn. I don't trust US sunscreens anymore and I recently ordered the Skin Aqua Super Moisturizer Milk which is a Japanese sunscreen that I heard great things about. So is there any validity to the claims that she makes? Is this a garbage sunscreen? And how does it stack up to other clear sunscreens that are on the market? We're putting them to the test today. I've got four different sunscreens. We're gonna look at these criticisms and compare that to the dupe, which is the Trader Joe's clear sunscreen, to black girl sunscreen, and to mantle sunscreen. So let's start with the unseen sunscreen. When I looked at her post, to me, she said she was reapplying it every 100 minutes, and most sunscreens are rated to be reapplied every two hours. That's 120 minutes, so she should be doing it right. She's getting on two layers, and that should be enough, because most people don't put on enough sunscreen, but in many ways, it sounds like she was doing it right, it just wasn't working well for her. Now, while tretinoin can make you a little bit more sun sensitive, I think that she should have had enough protection. So I don't know what the deal was with her and this sunscreen, but here's a couple of possibilities. If she's very fair skinned and lives in an area with really high UV exposure, if that UV index is off the charts every single day, then you may need to reapply more frequently than two hours. It's just not enough. Two hours is the minimum. But if that UV index is writing at 9, 10, 11 every day, you need to reapply maybe every 30 minutes. So that could be one issue. The other issue is that the Supergoop sunscreen is rated water resistant for 40 minutes. And again, if you're in a really hot area and you're sweating, you're not gonna get an hour and 20 minutes of protection out of that. You'll need to reapply every 40 minutes. So let's put it on, let's see how it looks and feels, and then we're gonna compare it to some of the others. So we're gonna start here with the unseen sunscreen right there on the hand. And you can kind of see the texture here, hopefully. It's got a little bit of a milky color to it initially, but it's not a white sunscreen by any means. And as we rub it in, you see that it melts in really well. It leaves a little bit of a slippery texture to the skin, but that goes away after a few minutes of use. So that's what it looks like there on the back of the hand. Let's put it on the face. We're gonna do two finger lengths to make sure we get enough. And then we're gonna put this on here. So this does have just a little bit of a traditional sunscreen smell. It's not overpowering, however. It's not anything like a Walmart Equate brand in the way that it smells. And by the way, those Equate brand sunscreens have actually won consumer reports before for the quality of protection they deliver. They're just not always the most cosmetically elegant or easy to use. So they do a good job, however. So this is the unseen sunscreen on my face. It feels good to me, it's not heavy. I'm not overpowered by fragrance or anything like that. It doesn't leave me shiny. And it does provide 40 minutes of water resistance. The average price for that is gonna be $38 and you get 50 milliliters or 1.7 ounces. So it's definitely more expensive than a lot of the other sunscreens on the market for that kind of size. This is meant to be a daily facial sunscreen and probably not the one that I would use if I was gonna go work out or go swimming personally. So the water resistant factor is not as big of a deal to me because if I know I'm gonna get wet, I'm gonna probably pick something different. So next on the list is the dupe. Everybody was super excited when the Trader Joe's sunscreen came out. This is an SPF 40 broad spectrum, water resistant for 40 minutes. You also get 50 milliliters or 1.7 ounces. So in many respects, these should be about the same type of sunscreen. 
Of course, there's going to be subtle differences between the manufacturers, but they really tried to mimic the unseen sunscreen in nearly every way with the level of protection, the water resistance, the size, but the price point is where it really is different here. This is like $8.99 at Trader Joe's, so like eight, nine bucks, you're getting almost the same thing, uh, but we're going to see how it actually looks and feels on the skin. So here it is on the back of the hand. And this one is a little bit more white texture. It's not quite as milky as the Unseen sunscreen. And as we rub it on, very similar feel to it. Just a little slippery and that starts to dry, leaves a nice matte finish. And the smell is about the same to me. So I don't think that there's a significant difference between the feel of these sunscreens, between the smell and the stats as we line them up side by side, they're almost identical. I'm gonna put it on the face and let's see how that feels. We got our two finger lengths again. One reason I really love clear sunscreens is I have facial hair and it doesn't clump up and turn my beard white. And if you have skin of color, that's a huge plus also without leaving a white cast. So that's what it looks like on the face. To me, it feels essentially identical to the Unseen sunscreen. The smell is the same to me, so I really think that there's very little difference between these two other than the formulas are slightly different and the prices are widely different. Right now, I'm favoring the Trader Joe's sunscreen over the two that we've tried. I'm gonna wipe this off again and we're gonna go on to Black Girl sunscreen. So this is Black Girl sunscreen and this is available at Target. Um, I think it's at Ulta as well. When we start out with just the stats, this is an SPF 45, so just a little bit higher than the two previous sunscreens that we've tried. This is fragrance free. It is water resistant rated for 80 minutes. So it does take a step up above the other two, which are only rated for 40 minutes of water resistance. This is also 1.7 ounces or 50 milliliters, so we're dealing with the exact same size and this retails for $15.99 to $17.99 depending on the store that you buy it at. And so the ultimate test here is, is it worth spending a little bit more money for the Black Girl sunscreen that has better water resistance compared to the Trader Joe's sunscreen? Because although I love Super Goop Unseen sunscreen, between the test, I'm still favoring Trader Joe's. So let's look at how this feels on the hand, how it looks, and then on the face as well. So we'll put that on here. And this has a much more clear texture than the other two so far. It is not the milky color initially of the Trader Joe's. It is not the milky color initially of the Super Goop. Um, there's a little more translucent to the uh, Trader Joe's version. This is just more clear to begin with. And as we rub it on, it is a little bit thicker. So it feels just a touch thicker it doesn't spread quite as easily, but it leaves a very nice matte finish. Like there's like no shine off of that. Of course, this is a great option for individuals with darker skin types because there's not gonna be any white cast here. So that's what it looks like on the back of the hand. So let's put this on the face, see how that feels. It is a little bit thicker of a product than the other two. All right, so that is Black Girl Sunscreen on my face. It's definitely a different texture than the other two. It feels a little bit more oily, but I believe it's oil free. I don't feel like it rubs in quite as well. I just, I feel it sitting on my skin a little bit more, but still overall a very good texture, not heavy, less of a sunscreen smell than the other two. And so I do like the formulation. I like that it is a little bit higher SPF and that it is better rated for water resistance at 80 minutes. So um, overall still, just my opinion on clear sunscreens is that I wouldn't make this my primary if I was gonna be jumping in a pool. I would still opt for a more traditional sunscreen. I just feel like they stay on and provide better protection. These, the way that they sit on the skin can be rubbed off, and I don't know that you're gonna get the longevity out of them just my personal feeling and preference on the matter. We've got one more to try and we're gonna compare that to the Mantle Skincare Sunscreen. 
Thank you if you've stuck around this long in the video because the next one is Mantle. This is the Invisible Daily SPF. This has a few things going for it right off the get-go is that Mantle is 3.3 ounces, so 98 mLs. This is essentially double the size of all of the other sunscreens that we have tested thus far. This has a little bit more range in the price. I've seen it as low as like $27 and I've seen it up to $42 depending on if it's at sale on Amazon or not. So Mantle is initially a line that was developed for men but it certainly can be used by women also. Uh, this at a larger size, it has a similar complement of ingredients to the other brands that we've talked about. However, this is not rated for water resistance. The other thing to know about this is it is an SPF 30, so the rating is a little lower than the other ones that we've tried. This doesn't bother me because I recommend an SPF 30 or higher. If you want to choose a sunscreen that has a higher level of protection, by all means you can, uh, but 30 is kind of the minimum. I apply a lot of sunscreen and I tend to reapply throughout the day. I put it on before I leave work in the afternoon for the drive home. And so I'm not bothered that it's a little bit lower than some of the others because it still meets the threshold for me. So let's try this on the back of the hand and see how it looks and feels. This has a pretty clear texture to it. It is a little translucent, I would say not as translucent as the Trader Joe's, not as milky as the Super Goop, but not quite as clear initially as the Black Girl sunscreen. So let's rub that in and see how it looks now. So this spreads very smooth. I would say just a little more smooth than the other ones we've tried, certainly more than the Black Girl sunscreen, and even a little bit better than Super Goop or the Trader Joe's. This does have a fragrance to it that was intentional by the brand, but it's not a sunscreen smell. It's just a very pleasant fragrance. Uh, because this is made for men, it's the type of fragrance I think most guys would enjoy or their partner would enjoy smelling on them. I've used other products by Mantle and they all have that same fragrance to them. If you're super sensitive to fragrance, you probably should avoid that. Most people are not fragrance allergic. So you can see how that looks. Nice matte finish. Uh, the most invisible of the ones that we've tried so far. I mean, I don't see it on the skin at all. I can feel it. It's got a nice silky feel, but it is not visible on the skin. So let's put it on the face and see how it feels and looks there. All right, we've got our two finger lengths here. It feels really smooth on the skin. I personally like the fragrance. It's less sticky than the Black Girl sunscreen. A little bit more lightweight than Super Goop or Trader Joe's. So that's what it looks and feels like. So that is the Mantle Invisible Daily SPF. Let's round it out with my thoughts on all four of these sunscreens and which one you should buy. So we tested four different clear sunscreens because somebody on Reddit thought Super Goop was garbage. Which one was my favorite and which one would I recommend that you buy? Overall, the one that feels best on the skin to me is the Mantle Invisible Daily SPF. I think it has the lightest weight texture. I personally enjoy the fragrance of it and I'm not going to be relying on it for its water resistance or lack thereof. It's not the one I'm going to wear if I go out running or if I'm working in the garden. But for a daily sunscreen to wear when I'm seeing patients or if I'm speaking on stage and I don't want to look shiny, I think it's an excellent option. It is still at a size you can travel with, but it's double the size of all the other sunscreens. So you're going to be rebuying it less often. It is going to cost you anywhere between $22 to $42. And so you can always look for sales and I'll have a discount code for it down in the video description because in full disclosure, I'm always going to be honest with you guys. I love that sunscreen so much I've invested in the company. So I want it to succeed but I personally love it and I wouldn't have joined the company if I didn't love it. Now of the others remaining, the one that I think is probably the best value and provides the best protection for what you get is going to be the Trader Joe's. I think it's an excellent dupe for the Super Goop sunscreen. The cost is a major game changer on that. You're only paying about $9 for that most of the time and it's nearly identical to Super Goop. I do love Super Goop. That's probably my third here. Um, it's just pretty expensive for the size that you get. It is the most expensive by the ounce of all of the sunscreens that we tested. 
And because of that, I think the Trader Joe's beats it out. They're nearly identical in every other way. I just didn't enjoy the texture of the Black Girl sunscreen as much, but that's very much an individual personal preference type of thing. Some people are really gonna like it and favor it. It does provide the best water resistance if that is something you're looking for in your daily facial sunscreen, and it is just a little bit more protection than all the others at an SPF of 45. So if you guys have tried any of these, let me know which one is your favorite down in the comments, and I'll have links to all four products, so if you do like one over the other, Feel free to go there and make your own purchases. My personal recommendation is the Mantle Invisible Daily F. It is the one that I wear every single day when I'm seeing patients or when I'm traveling, not the one that I wear when I'm gonna be at the beach, however. So thank you for watching and let me know what other product reviews and comparisons you'd like to see in the future. I'll see you guys on the next video.